Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to, I'm going to call this Saturday matinee. We're going to skip Super Fun Sunday, but obviously this is going to be a very long video. Well, not obviously, but you're going to see that it's going to be long. Uh, so you can watch it on Saturday like a movie or watch it on Sunday like a movie. But uh, this this is probably going to be the greatest Frank Miller video that I've done, and I've done quite a few uh, I just, I've been thinking about Frank lately a little bit, and he's got some announcements and stuff that have been going on, and, uh, there's a lot that you can learn from Frank, and, in fact, what's really interesting about Frank's stuff is kind of the more that you mature as an artist, I actually think that the more you can get out of it, so he's always very, very worth, uh, revisiting, and you'll always kind of find something new. I've got... Dark Knight work in here. I have Electra. I have Daredevil. I have Sin City. I have 300. I have stuff that I guarantee that you've never seen. Um, Lone Wolf and Cub, Ronin. I mean, it's insane. It's so good. Um, I was getting really excited actually just gathering all the images. I found a few new places to look for images. And so I was able to get stuff that normally I wouldn't have access to, which was cool. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, settle in. This is going to be amazing. He's an incredible inker, too. Uh, you'll see he's worked in a, a bunch of different styles, and he really, really has a very exciting and interesting line. And it's everything that he does is advanced. His fight scenes that he orchestrates, the whole thing is insane. So uh, I just, this was a powerful image, so I kind of went with this first. But um, yeah. This is just some wild, wild techniques. I know I have a lot of um, friends and people on Patreon and stuff like that that are um, huge Miller fans. So this is going to be a great one for you. But look how lively his line is just even throughout the face. He does these great things. Let me grab the brush. Let me get a full screen for just one second. So I have a little bit of a pointer. Oh, <laughs> I've got a wild brush right now. Uh, all right, so full screen. Um, and uh, yeah, but I mean, do you see this? Like, like his lines just aren't boring. There's always something interesting going on. They're not just like uh, these static lines. There's always a thin, a thicker, you know, it's just really, really exciting. That adds up over the whole piece. And, um, you know, it's just incredible. So, so that's so much good stuff. Um, Sin City original art is a little bit hard to come by to see. I've got the huge um, Big Fat Kill artist edition, or what's it called? The Hard Goodbye. Um, and uh, it's it's amazing. Um, I've done videos on it before, but uh, yeah, it's not, it's not so easy to actually find um, Sin City and 300 original art or scans of the original art online um, and... Uh, I'm still hopeful. I mean, Frank is so iconic that it's there's a high likelihood that at some point they'll do like an artist edition of 300 of some sort. So this is great. We've got a, a few different inkers inked. I thought this was interesting because it was Terry Austin. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, really, really cool. It's nice inks. Really, really cool page. In a way, you can kind of see what the rendering that Frank is going for. I mean, like, like the the... The, I, the, he may not have known that he was going to do Ronin, but you you can really see when you look back on Frank's career, things that he did either by accident or things that he had maybe seen and was trying to emulate, and how they carry over into work that he did later. It's really, really interesting. I saw some stuff um, getting this video together that was really quite cool um, that I, I had never seen before. This is nice. Sometimes with these pieces, although I don't know about this exact one, um, sometimes he'll they may drop in more black. He doesn't do that a lot, but this one looks kind of, I think it's done as is. Man, it's good. This was this was one of those videos. Not, I mean, I've, I've shot over 600 videos for YouTube. Not to mention the other probably six or seven hundred I've done for Patreon. So I've got a lot of experience analyzing art. Um, and uh, occasionally I'll do a video or I'm collecting art for a video. And it really starts to make you reconsider sort of your own approaches to things. This was definitely one of those times when I was getting this stuff together. Where you go, you know, take a minute, take a deep breath. 
and just think about what you do, what you do with your art, how you how you draw, how you approach things, how you think about things, and um, this this video I think will do that for people. This is good. And all the art that we look at is impressive. It's just sometimes it has a different impact on you. He's oh God. He's so good with these. There's there's so many pages that I grabbed that are sequentials. This is interesting. So I don't know if those X's on the street indicate black, or um, and they were going to do it maybe um, after, be a lot faster. <laughs> That's for sure. Maybe he wants a dark color there. Um, I'm not really sure. I I would have to compare it to the original page, but it'll be kind of interesting to see. He's really good at fight scenes, though. My gosh. And he's drawn so many. And an obvious thing to point out is that Frank sometimes works, sometimes, keyword, in a slightly minimalistic approach. Within that, though, he tells a damn good story. And trust me, the guy is far from lazy because he's got, one, an enormous body of work, and two, uh, some of the stuff that he does is really, really cool. Uh, complex and detailed so he knows when to let off the oh so this is Andy Kubert okay um on oh well no this uh this is Mil I'm nearly sure that this is it was credited as Frank Miller maybe they just credited him as the writer hmm uh what I was gonna say is um he knows when to let off the gas pedal on things and uh, it's interesting to see what he does. But even the Sin City work, honestly, is quite complex and would take a long time to do. There's a lot of planning involved. And also, um, anytime you're working with a lot of black, it's very, very time consuming. It's it's almost easier not to have, have black on pieces, to be honest. This is really cool. At some point, he... Um, he really got kind of an unusual like girl's face because it's not like the classic pretty girl comic book face. I don't really know where that originates from him, if it was just something that he sort of fell into. It goes way back, though. I mean, there's Electra pages where where her, her face, her head is kind of big and the face is very, um, I don't know, broad would be the right word for it, but you don't really know where, where that aesthetic comes from him, but it's it's definitely unique to Frank. I've got some really, really good Black Widow stuff in here, too, you're going to see, that that um, some really killer fight scenes. This is awesome. God, man, look at this shit. We'll, we'll kind of take a look at the page, and then I'll zoom in, and we can see closer details. This is great right here. God, man, that's so good. So when I first started collecting comics, two artists that popped on my radar immediately because they were both starting very iconic books for them was uh, Mignola and Frank Miller. Look, at one point, I think this page was 25 bucks. Cheapy. I think this went for somewhere around 12 to 18 grand. Might have been less, but... Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> stuff went up in value a little bit, right? <laughs> but yeah, if, oh god, this is great. Um, Frank, f Frank, it, he at times he almost has like, well, he'll. What well, depends on what era you're looking at. Sometimes you'll see Mobius in his work. I definitely see some um, Atomo in his work at times. I think this stuff, like the Dark Knight Returns stuff, to me, feels a lot like Akira. Now. I, I, I don't know. I don't have anything to substantiate that on, but but I don't know. I get like I get a, I get like Akira vibes, <laughs> and I love Akira. So um, it it just is like it's my that's my weak underbelly is Akira. Man, this is so good. Oh my gosh, that shit is just. But, like, look at the inks here. I know Scott Williams is a huge fan of Miller, and, and he's he's really understands Frank's work, and Klaus Janssen as well. Um, and uh, 
but Frank will just do this wild shit. Like he just hits this line like a little bit heavier here. He'll have this just hyper thin line going, and then he just pulls little things out. It's really, really cool. Like his choices are so interesting. He's like a really good. I, I I sometimes grab a couple um scans of the same piece just because uh, I like sometimes to see the border of the pages like this. They have like a zoom in shot of it where they get real tight. I actually kind of like to see, um, you know, the this the book issue page, the little thing where Marvel always trims the pages. This is nice though. I did do some jail cell sequences in um, Crystal Planet, and uh, I mean, it's tricky. I, I had two people talking in two different cells, and that was really challenging because, um, you know, one, it's like, how do you show one person talking and one person listening, um, and then also draw it through bars, positioning the characters? I mean, he's inside the cell filming this scene or drawing this scene, but uh, when you're doing shots outside looking into a shell, uh, cell, you have to be really mindful of... Um, character position because the bars can cover up weird things and it might work for the face and the lower body um you can't you know like can't have the gesture read that's real interesting it was challenging but i think i did a decent job on it zai i ain't no frank miller but um these characters are so funny down here <laughs> this guy he looks like he's out of a beavis and butthead cartoon not literally but close close enough There was a, I don't know, is it on this page? No. There was one, one, there was an Electra page where her face was like pretty funny. This is the same page. Like I said, I, I, I didn't do this a lot, but there was just a few that I grabbed like the same scan twice. Uh, okay. I have most of these comics, like the Daredevil stuff for sure. Uh, all the Sin City too, definitely. I'll have his Spider-Man annual. I didn't grab a lot from the Spider-Man annual. He did a king, king-sized um, Spider-Man. I, I can't. I want to say it's fourteen. It's been a little while since I've actually looked at it. I could be wrong. The number I might be thinking of something else. This is cool. He did great stuff with the cars in Sin City and and this, just like the white wheels and all that. I always thought it was pretty pretty good. Look at this. God, this page is great. Frank is very influential. I mean, there's uh, there's hundreds of artists, if not thousands, but definitely hundreds of known artists that that um, you know have bits and pieces of Miller in their work for sure. God, so good. Would have been a really interesting guy to know in the like just throughout his early career in particular i'm sure he still is but just uh it's always it i think what's interesting to me is because i've worked at a art studio is to work around an artist is they're um evolving you know what i mean he's not fully evolved now but you know what i mean it's it's like the difference of frank in 1978 versus 80 versus 83 versus 89 you know what i mean it would have been really interesting to see how it all kind of came about and the inks are just killer on this. The drawings are great, but I mean, like I said, even as someone who's, you know, uh, kind of both, his inks are impressive. This is funny. Had to grab a few hulks. It's sort of been a theme in the video, so. <laughs> well, I, I saw a couple hulk pieces, pages, and stuff like that I grabbed them just because it's kind of funny. Always interesting to see people's take on the hulk. This is cool. The, uh, you know, one person who's definitely influenced by this stuff is Todd McFarlane. There was, there was definitely, was this the page? No, no, there's another, there's another page where it's like, you could definitely tell that Todd was a huge um, Miller fan. As the early issues of Spawn in particular, you can see it in it. This is just great shit. Look at this, this spread. Oh, this is nice. This panel up here with this guy. I mean, that is just, like, so good. The door feels a little high, like this lower frame. I don't know if the... It feels like it should be down here. But, 
but uh, I'm not sure what the, I assume that's like a door with a window, but yeah, this this is throwing me off, this line right here. It feels like it should be lower. Um, but past that, it's really cool. There could be a step or something there. This is a great panel. <clears throat> this is awesome too. Man, really good. This was cool. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's go. No, just, just don't keep any of my uh, doodlings. This is nice, man. Interesting. Weapon X. Barry Windsor Smith, I'm talking to you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Barry had to have been a fan of this stuff. How could you not like like Frank's stuff at this time? He was tearing it up. <clears throat> Ninjas. Electra. Choking him out. Chokey, chokey. Oh man, yeah. I'm, this was one of the later scans that I grabbed. But man, this this bottom thing right here is just great. Look at Spidey. Ooh, that's hot. God, man, that is so killer. Crash. Oh boy. Spectacular Spider-Man twenty-seven. So, for people wanting to hunt this down, there you go. This was a little McFarlane-like. These long, tall panels was one thing that I noticed. It was giving me some spawn vibes. This is great. Man, look at this. And this is the, the, the Klaus Janssen inks. I, I'm assuming this is Klaus inks on this. But this, this is the same idea. It's these nice, thin lines, and then these just really beautiful like larger chunky areas really really freaking cool like this just burp. and that's a thick line right there around his head but it looks so nice with this thin line here and this thin line here this is nice and thick so you know, this is, and it is, you'll, you'll hear me mention this in some videos where I talk about the, um, the risk that you run. If you've never really worked with brushes and, um, things like, um, crow quills and you just only have inked with, um, things like Copic multiliners or microns or whatever other pit pens, things like that, you may have a very dead line and not even realize that you're doing it. But, um, artists, like myself who have worked with these other tools when i work with a micron i'm constantly scribbling and what i'm scribbling is i'm scribbling stuff like this thicker lines blips blops feathering whatever it is but i'm 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 just replicating the same lines just with a different tool but i know the line that i want if you don't know the lines that you want and the tool will dictate it and then um you can kind of run into some sort of um issues this is really cool it's kind of got the eisner sort of vibe and same goes for digital tools don't kid yourself <laughs> see what you people are up to with clip studio some of it is again nice nice interesting variety of lines really really kick-ass drawing Kind of trippy. So this is from 1981. Man, he was on fire at this point. Oh, look at this page. God, this is great. So this is probably Joseph Rubenstein inks on this. Rubenstein is awesome. He's a really, really good artist in his own right. Um, and uh, he's on Facebook if you uh, want to follow him. He does some really beautiful paintings. He's really talented. Man, stuff is good. Frank's signature is really interesting, too. What is going on with that? That's wild. It's, it's one of the more unusual... Like this right here, this is one of the more unusual comic book signatures I've actually seen. Uh, it's very, very cool. Very creative. This is neat. Wow. 
this this video is like the greatest artist edition or like i wouldn't really call it a frank miller documentary because i don't really have that much information on on his life really but uh yeah in terms of like a virtual artist edition or artisan edition or whatever you want to call it this video is like man this thing is gold the fingerprints wow look at this oh yeah this was the page or is it no there's a different one there's another one that he used like a screen tone that had a really interesting fact i mean this is too um but uh it's funny it yelled a bit more here but the, here it hasn't yelled as much i wonder if it was the same exact paper it kind of i mean they're different patterns um so whatever the company made this it was a little more acid free this one yellowed a bit more this one yelled a bit more but this is similar to this up here you can see because it's this is circles turning into um well dots man it's hard to tell it's like the is the is did the, the chicken or the egg come first so it goes from black dots to white dots i don't even know what's what's the pattern do what do you see maybe they're lines lines that turn into dots the mystery and this is a pretty cool bottom panel. Oh yeah, look at this. Kingpin looks very young right here. This is like 15 year old Kingpin. He's like, did you eat the last churro? <laughs> it's like, damn Kingpin, you always want all the churros to yourself. Ah, oh, this is cool. Again, Fantastic inks. I, this is probably Klaus, but man, yeah, this is good. God, man. And the thing about the flat inking too, I've I've actually been guilty of it myself, where I've worked with Microns a lot for a, a certain amount of time. There was an artist that I was working over that um used paper that would tear real easily, and so I had to use Microns because they're soft soft pens it was before copic multi-liners had really hit the scene i'm gonna just take the brown out of this just to, um and um yeah after about six months of doing it um a friend of mine from wildstorm actually pointed it out to me he's like what are you thinking when you're inking here and i'm like i don't know like what, what are you seeing he's like it looks a little different for your stuff and i'm like really like how so he goes i don't know it just feels like feels like he's like are you into it i'm like yeah i'm into it and he's, he goes, yeah, it looks a little flat or something. I was like, oh, okay. Stung a little bit to hear it, but but uh, I immediately... So this was interesting stuff that I had never seen. Um, shoot, I don't know if... Um, I can't... Maybe it's Barney the Bomber or something like that. We'll, we'll see if there's a name on one of the other ones. But I'd never, ever seen this stuff, but he was a strip artist, apparently, and quite a good one. This is This is really, really nicely drawn stuff. I mean, really, really good. He definitely had his fundamentals like locked in because these drawings of the planes are great and the ship and stuff like that. It's like really, really good. Yeah, I'd, I'd never seen any of this stuff. No idea that it even existed. And look, there's his early signature. Crazy, right? There's I have at least three or four. There was more that I could have grabbed, but... um. I, I had so much art. This is the back of a piece. I'll show you the front in a second. But uh, so and whatever the other piece was originally sold for 180. So just keep that in mind when we look at whatever we're gonna see next. It's nice, nice little anatomy drawing. Nice tight ass. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Oh, so it was on the back of this page. Yeah, 180 is cheap for this. This would go for a lot more now. Thousands. <laughs> Man, this is some ballsy inks. Man, they were good. This is a nice shot right here. It's funny, it looks like Charles Bronson, and that looks like uh, Brando. I mean, obviously, it's intentional. I'm not sure who this is supposed to be. He's, he's kind of channeling his inner Mort Drucker, in a way. 
This was interesting. So this is Bruce D. Patterson inking him. I'm a sucker for anything that looks like 70s and 80s sort of space, like these, these, like the splatter skies and all that. So I grabbed, there's, I think, another, like one other page of this. So this is Captain Marvel. I hadn't really seen this. It's kind of fun. Looks pretty early. It was 1980. Who knows the circumstances of, like, the deadline stuff. This is all pretty classic Marvel looking stuff. Let's do one thing really quick. Color ink. Yeah. Okay. So, so when I point, it will show up. Yeah. Fun. Fun page. I liked it. This was really cool, man. God, such a cool page. So this went fairly cheap. This was only a couple grand. I was surprised. But it also depends on when it's sold. But yeah, that was kind of cool. Little backgrounds and tight shots of characters. This is kind of groovy. So this was another Hulk page. Like I said, I was just... It's kind of a goof now, but... Uh, um, figured when I can find Hulk art, I'll throw it in. <laughs> His hair. Hulk has the most amazing clothes because they rip, but he's never nude. <laughs> I think the Hulk would be scary, scarier naked. <laughs> Marvel, can we work on that? <laughs> so again, one of these just classic, like people just spilling all over fight scenes with stuff flying left and right. He's so good at this. So it's cool. So that you'll you'll see the um, this is a prelim that came with an original. Um, I, I can't remember if the original is the same piece. It may be it may be this, but uh, so he just fairly. I mean, I wouldn't really call these tight prelims, but um, he definitely gets the position of things the way where he wants it and gets the perspective pretty much worked out. Um, and um, he uses a red marker. It's interesting because I've done I've done stuff real similar to this where, um, for some reason, with a sharpie, although it stinks and it'll smell up your office if you do it a lot. But um, I, when I would do my thumbnails, this is a while back before Crystal Planet, but this was the old way that I would do thumbnails. Is I would do pencils and kind of like the line art in a pen, but I never felt like I could cut loose. And and what I found is a sharpie for some reason liberated me to actually go in and draw better it was a real weird thing but the thickness of it maybe made it where i couldn't be fussy and i i tended to be able to nail things just in a different way it was very weird so it's interesting that he does it too i would do it with a black sharpie but i have i have um thumbnails that i did years ago for um vertigo uh that i did the exact same technique and it just seemed to give a more comic book quality to it. This was the face that was kind of funny I was talking about, but... <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it could be a stat. It looks like it's on the original board, but yeah, her head's a little big, and she looks... She, she turned into, like, a an eight-year-old, um, like, comic book character boy or something. This one's kind of wild, too. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with her face here. It might have been in a rush. This is nice, though. He did a real good job with that. These are cool. So these are these are just production um, files of uh, the colors for Dark Knight Returns. Let's see if I can rotate it. Oh, I can. Wow. When I have this, my files up, and sometimes Photoshop wants to be a little bit of a butthead. But these are like um, proofs. Um, but I thought that they were kind of cool. A lot of times when you see things like this, um, you really see the colors a little bit more accurately um, than sometimes how they printed. They might dull out or there could be like a little bit of a color shift. But um, seeing these, you really get a sense of exactly what the, the subtleties of the colors were, um, which I, I think is pretty neat. And let's rotate this back. Wow, it's exciting that it actually is rotating. Um, I think I can go escape. Yeah. Uh, this is really cool. I do have some color guides from Steve Olaf though on Wolverine that are originals, uh, original Olaf colors in here. So if you're a fan of Steve Olaf, you will like that. Here's another prelim. 
really cool again you can see the red marker to go in and put the clothes over his basic like figure rough I'm telling you it works it really really works that i always i i always say this that that um uh david finch is an example that i give um a lot is is I'm always, when I hear David say something that, that I figured out on my own or something that I've been doing, I always look at that as a really positive thing. Whereas David's got, you know, 25 years of professional experience and it might be some weird thing that I stumbled on, but you, you hear or see a professional doing something similar that's far more advanced than you, you know, decades past where you're at. Um, it's a reassuring thing that you're like, okay, cool. Like I, I, I figured something out or I've got a part of my process that, um, they 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 say the same thing. David always refers to drawing comics as cartoony, even even though there's some realism in his work, and that's kind of how I see it too. No matter how realistic you get in comic books, you have to be a good cartoonist because it's not the same as like what Drew Struzan does. You know, you can draw really really good and be able to do life studies that are just spot on accurate. But if you're not a good cartoonist, you will struggle doing comics, no matter how good your illustration skills are. They're just different muscles. That's why a lot of people that think that they're going to... This was... No, this is a different page. A lot of people think that with like digital tools, 3D models and whatnot, that they're going to sort of be able to bridge the gap between a lack of drawing knowledge and being able to pull off stuff. It, it's kind of the same thing though all the reference in the world won't make you a good cartoonist you know it can kind of help you get drawings done but it will be lacking the things that make comics cartoons really are just sequentially laid out he knows he's like you're right rich <laughs> of course I'm right that's why I do YouTube. I actually pulled this. I pulled this into the video for a couple of reasons. There's two two pieces like this. I had a patron who's getting back into drawing, and after about a ten year break, and um, he's just getting the hang of drawing and procreate. And he sent a couple of pieces that were black backgrounds with um, you know a white pen or something like on it, and uh, they were just doodles. But uh, it reminded me of what he did. So I thought if he watches this video, this might help him. Um, be excited about what he's kind of tinkering with right now but uh these are cool Mo mobius did a series of drawings that are on black paper they're far more detailed than this but um they're really really cool black paper looks great with drawings on it any colored paper really kind of does but uh yeah i mean this you can just really do like line art on but uh you know might be worth doing i've i've bought black paper before okay so this is some more of these Oh, let's rotate this, sorry. Yeah, the colors just felt they, they seemed a little more vibrant. It looked it looks I mean I have um multiple copies of these books. I, I would say I probably have five five copies of each issue of Dark Knight Returns at least that I've bought and just they end up in my collection from collections that I bought and back issues and whatnot. And um they all really actually do look a little bit different. Each one printed a little differently, so um I don't remember any that have this bright of colors, but maybe my memory fails me. But even this looks a little more lush, it, and it, it actually looks better. It's in my in my opinion, this this looks better than um, I remember in the comic. All right, let's rotate this. Oops. These these kind of feel like something out of Akira too. I thought some of his like creepy creepy people and stuff had a little bit of the Atomo vibe. Oh, look at this! I grabbed this one fast. So I didn't even peek at this one. Man, that is so sick, dude. That's me seeing this page. <laughs> god, this is so kick ass. Oh my god, I love this. Oh, I wish I would have bought this. Damn. Who knows when it sold, but this is kick ass. And this is just a proof. I mean this is this is not I don't think these are hand colored. I mean they they, they were originally, but uh what I mean is these are just like film or something like that, but man it looks good. <laughs> God, that is great. Wow. This panel is really fun. And then this up here is like, whew, man. 
like I said, he described this first panel describes the reaction that you get seeing it. And this is pretty wild too. These colors have got to be brighter than the book. I don't, I don't, I don't think I have. Do I have it in here right now? I might have a hardcover of it in here. I'm just looking at my bookshelves. Like I said I don't, I don't have a ton of bookshelf space in my office or my studio, so um, I have to kind of rotate stuff in and out. I don't think I have any, any in here right now. But uh, I have some Sin City. But uh, all right, rotate this way. Come on, Rich. Ooh, look at that. Horses. I want to say that I might have a black and white version of this page. I'm nearly sure that I remember seeing that. This was a lot of work. Honestly, This getting files for this video almost gave me carpal tunnel. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> My hand was going numb from right clicking. <laughs> Is this another World Trade Center thing? Huh. It's been so long, I can't remember. Okay, let's go. Ooh, look at these. Look at that. Even his, the hand, like the inks on the handwriting right here is great. That's a, that looks like, um, Chris, John Chris Felucci's signature. This is really, really cool, though. Man, that's great. This is awesome. I, I have two pieces, or at least one, that's a collaboration between Sienkiewicz and Frank Miller for uh, Lone Wolf and Cub covers. And I actually have two mirrors um, of Frank Miller um, that are rare, very rare. They were tests um, of merchandise they were going to make. One is this image, and one is um, a different one of these. But uh, yeah, I have them in my garage. And let's see what this is. That is really cool. Almost looks like it said diabetes. <laughs> like di diabetic medicine there? What is that? All right. Oh, that's a really cool shot. I feel like I've seen other artists sort of um, riff off of this exact thing. Like getting Batman getting shot or something. Maybe I'm off on that. Looks It looks familiar like I'd seen someone else like emulate it. Man, this is great. Oh, there's this one cover that I have. Oh my gosh, where do you guys see it? It's got all these. It's a, it's an electric cover, but it has all these characters like spilling through the middle of it. It's so cool. This is a great panel. But you know the thing is, is like it's funny. Like I key in on this, but this is a very simple drawing. It's just effective and it looks cool. It really creates a moment. This is awesome. This looks great. I like how he's putting the bad guys in silhouette like a like an unseen threat he's real clever with that stuff I and mean, if you really pay attention to the subtleties of when he does stuff like that you can really learn a lot from it okay, cool I'm, I'm actually really having a lot of fun looking at these um i had a hunch that they would be uh worth it oh this is great great drawing and the colors are actually pretty cool god man this stuff is so good Let's rotate it. Ooh, the lighting on her and him too, in fact. Man, it's great. Looks like the morning sunlight is like starting to come up. They need to print the book in color like this. Hmm, interesting. Oh, well. Wow. Oh man, that guy's so creepy. <laughs> Lots of black panels, it's funny. And then this is wild. This is so 80s. 70s, 80s. Oh man, that's so cool. That's what I'm talking about. Imagine having to do a shot like this, but then this person is talking to a character behind them in the cell. Because that's kind of what I had to do. I, I picked similar shots to this, actually. I mean, this a uh, kind of similar angle um, at times. Um, but the bars and stuff like that really can make it challenging when you have to, you know, have another person in the cell next to him chit-chatting. I think that was in issue four of Crystal Planet. I can't even remember. Maybe issue three and four. This guy's cool. <laughs> I 
yeah, what happened to me is once I started working on the book, I really didn't have time to like study anymore. So it's, it's, I don't know. I mean, maybe some artists do, but once I started it, it was 16 months of what do you have in your head? <laughs> Whatever you know is what you're going to be able to use right now. And then you kind of regroup either in between books or, and usually based on what, what you either had successes with or what you struggled with. If, if you were like, man, I don't know how to do fight scenes, then you become more, um, uh, like sensitive to like trying to pay attention when you see people doing a fight scene or whatever it is. And then you hope that if in the next issue that you draw, um, if there's a fight scene, maybe you can utilize it. But I don't know the, I, at least for me, the idea of like, Oh, I need to draw this. I'm going to go through my comics and grab shit out to like, try to help me. And I mean, it just never happened. Not once. Um, but I know that some people do work that way. This is cool. So I have some Ronin pages in here. They're great. One thing that you'll notice with Frank's work, um, I usually will point it out, is he is not afraid to cut stuff out and paste it in. If he doesn't like his original drawing on a page, but the page is salvageable, meaning that there's panels that he does like, he will draw on another board and then just cut it out and paste it down. So you can see that this head, he's redone. He did it a lot in Dark Knight Returns over Klaus Janssen's inks, which is... Uh, it's within Frank's rights, but it could make for an uncomfortable work situation. I'm, I, I don't know how it all felt at the time. Time heals all wounds, but um, if I was an inker and someone was doing that a lot on my work, it would be kind of weird, but he's also Frank Miller, so... <laughs> you, stop complaining, inker. And don't forget your swimsuit, because you're going to San Diego Comic-Con. This was a great page. I thought this was really, really nice. Just classic comic book looking art. Man, it's great. Good guys wear red. Look at this, another just, this is so awesome. Oh my gosh, he's so good. You think KFab does videos like this? No, they probably do, I don't know. <laughs> Everyone likes KFab better than me. It's just, I've just come to understand that they're better. <laughs> no, I don't even know. I got my eye on other YouTubers that do comic stuff, comic tropes. I could do a, if I just did a channel that was the history of characters' origins, go to Wikipedia, and slap together something, I could literally, I could probably quadruple the amount of views on my channel. Not even kidding. I'm not not aware of that, to be clear. Someday I may pull that card. You'll see. I've been holding back. I've been holding back content. <laughs> this is awesome. I just never wanted my channel to be a lessons channel, so I know that people are like, oh, do some, like, tutorial videos. I don't want to do it on YouTube, honestly. So, Patreon is where I do lessons and reviews and, and more uh, drawing-type stuff, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I, just my YouTube channel. was That was never what I came here for, so I'm not going to change that idea. This was one of the pages that we saw in color, pretty sure. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. He's done a few panels like this with sort of like a sprawling fight. So, um, uh, it was, I was like doubted myself for a split second. Man, this is so good. Again, the, the line work on this is just killer. The variety of line weights and thicks and thins and just, it's incredible what they do. It's, it's it just blows my mind. This is a funny shot. You know, I mean, like, even this, I mean, this is a very, very simple background, but he turns the buildings, and he's got a vanishing point. Sorry, I'm using a mouse to do this, but, I mean, there's a there's a vanishing point. So he shows sides of the buildings, fronts of the buildings, fronts, sides. It just makes it a little more interesting um, than just, uh, uh, like, a convenient side view with no perspective where every building is completely horizontal. Um, 
you, you know, I mean, it's it's highly unlikely that you could ever capture that moment. <laughs> it, it and when you and this was another one that we saw in color. You you normally uh, a a more accomplished artist will use that as a stylistic effect, meaning that they 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 intentionally do a side view of everything. Um, uh, like almost like um, a graphic design not a survival instinct because you have to draw buildings and you don't know how to turn a rectangle to two point perspective <laughs> Frank Miller's making me sassy this is interesting so I wasn't really 100% sure on this these are supposedly like character designs or something like that but um I don't really like it was what what is this Batman from exactly is because it's not really the Dark Knight Returns Batman or is it and I'm just like I it, it feels weird he's he there's definitely I have a few pieces with this Batman but the way the ears are and stuff like that feels different so I wasn't really sure um, what it was from this was interesting so this was this was a, a charity piece for like um, freedom of speech if I'm not mistaken, it definitely looks like it's his Ronin style, but I'm nearly sure it was a cover or a print um, for uh, something like that. And if it if this isn't it, there's one that's similar that was for that. I, I try to make mental notes um, of some of the more unusual or more interesting stories uh, on the pieces when I when I when I grab them. But uh, this is great, man. I I mean this all day, and it, this would look beautiful. He could have, you know, the thing is, is he could have actually kept the original black and white printed oh i didn't even realize this was a face check this out oh let me grab my stylus so i can do it without the mouse that's the nose these are the eyes i didn't i didn't see it when i was first looking oh sorry um i i didn't notice it when i was first um looking at it because i am sitting right next to the monitor so it's super my face but he could have he could have printed this out on some really good like watercolor paper and done had two versions you know a color version and his black and white original um this was the electro piece that I was talking about that had all the um, the characters, like the ninjas, through the middle. Man, this is great. So cool. I'll zoom out in a second. I just want to look at all these little guys. God, that is so good. Kari Andrews at one point was kind of doing a riff on Frank Miller and did a real nice job on it. I mean, there's, there's, like I said, there's a bunch of artists that have been influenced by Frank. Kari is interesting because Kari will really kind of embrace someone's style and kind of run with it for a bit. Sort of like what Steve McNiven does, where McNiven will like latch on to a particular artist and kind of like explore their style. I think it's fun. You, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's an interesting way to work. Um, and uh, fans seem to enjoy it, you know, that, that sort of nod to the past. It's a very iconic cover. I have about a million copies of this book. <laughs> oh, these were really cool. So I'm, I'm assuming Jim Salicrup, I recognize the name, but I think he's an editor at Marvel or was an editor at Marvel, but I'm not super uh, knowledgeable on that. This is interesting. His Spider-Man is beefy here, more beefy than the old one that he drew. The Daredevil is great. This is super cool. These look like they might have been done in the 90s just based on his signature. I, I When I grabbed them, I thought that they were maybe earlier, but I, I, I'm, now I'm doubting that. This is cool, too. I'll keep an eye when we're looking on these dark, at the Dark Knight Returns pages for stats, meaning um, cutout panels. Um, cause like I said, Frank went in and was pretty aggressive with like, um, corrections. This is awesome. And again, kind of a different inking style, to be honest. I mean, he really, he really just sort of switches it up kind of at, at his own discretion. And it's quite impressive what he pulls off. Does anyone know what his main inking tool is? Like, like, is there a certain um, pen nib that he uses? I'd be definitely interested in knowing if anyone knows. I, I have no idea. I was, I was gonna say that I, I had never met him, but I actually, I said this in the last video. I didn't know Frank. I, I went to a dinner with um, Jim Lee, Scott Williams, uh, Lynn Varley, Scott Doombier. Maybe ten people. 
and and um, I ended up being sat right next to Frank Miller and got to sit next to him for probably like a three or four hour dinner, and it was really cool. <laughs> it's like I could listen to him talk all night. It was awesome. Uh, this was really neat. This is fun. Is just a random pencil piece that he did at some point, um, but pretty pretty interesting to see. His pretty fairly tight pencils. You know, it's all there for sure. Classic Marvel look. Spider-Man's pose is a little wacky. Like this one leg is getting kind of a little almost um, undoable. Some of the perspective on this stuff is a little funky, but it's still cool. I mean, he's nailing enough of it, and a good inker could definitely pull this in and make it look pretty badass. So it's, a, it's a, a little bit of a flat shot for Frank. It's kind of funny. I'll point this out since we were talking about perspective a little bit before. It, he's he he doesn't really have an eye level in this piece. It's like the eye level sort of is always. Uh, sorry again. I'm using my mouse, so it's crooked. But the eye level is kind of always like straight across. But but he shows a little bit of the bottom of this. But what's funny is is as you would move up the piece, it would get more extreme. But on here, he's kind of got these. It's sort of the same perspective as this down here. But yeah, there's no real eye level to this piece. Eye level is always straight across because even these lines are going straight across so it's kind of he he definitely was still figuring stuff out because that's not a mistake frank would would um make and and again the only other time that you would do it is if you're doing it as a graphic design thing which which could be part of why he chose to do it i thought this was really cool this is nice is this Oh, this is Dark Knight Returns. It's much more heavy-handed than a lot of the other inks. So not sure if this is a Frank um, going back in and inking stuff. It doesn't really look like Klaus. Or wait. Yeah, DC Comics. Okay. This is cool. This, this original is really quite white. Like the paper. I don't know what kind of paper it was using, but it really held up well. All right. Oh, man. Shadow Man, right? This is a Valiant cover. Nineteen ninety-two. This is a little tiny bit, probably right before I started collecting. I've, I've shared this in another video before. It was either one of the big art dives, but man, this is cool looking. <laughs> the sense of scale on this is just off the charts. It is really, really neat. I love this panel right here. It's really cool. This is great too. The whole thing, man. Look at this. And, and this is interesting also. I, I'm trying to see if I'm missing out on something. It's it's interesting that he's got him climbing up on this side, and then he flips the camera so that we're looking at him the other way. Um, and then uh, it switches, and then it switches back. And there's obviously a reason that he did it. I, would, I will have to really, I'm going to have to really pay attention when I um, watch this video back. But um, I, I don't know if it's two characters simultaneously climbing up a mountain. Um Again, maybe the, the comic story would tell. It's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I'll read it too when I go back and watch this. Oh, this was the uh, this was the page was upside down uh, that we looked at in color. Man, the inks on this are wild. Super scratchy. See, and this is kind of that Batman too, like the the ears and stuff. He looks more like a cat. Okay, so we're gonna start wrapping this up in a few minutes because I didn't want it to go too much over an hour. Okay, oh, this is awesome. I think we're kind of actually getting towards the end anyway. Get your ass to the chopper. This was cool. Bye.
bam coming in hot brack yeah you think so too kitty yeah sorry i didn't mean to interrupt your nap i apologize the center sorry clud <laughs> thwack is a kick clud i don't know walk thwack i'm feeling thwack walk maybe <laughs> crack is always good crack works for me <laughs> oh yeah yeah this is this is um similar to that ahead i don't know maybe that's the way that he drew him it's just in the book sometimes it doesn't seem like it i had this in um, one of the art i think that insane art video but this is insane oh, i would love to have more of this stuff in black and white oh Please, Dark Horse, make it happen. And Frank, if you ever see this video, you are awesome. I've loved your work my whole comic book collect collecting career. I sometimes will refer to Frank as my favorite comic book artist, honestly. I know people think it's Travis, but I think it goes... It's it's probably my top four would be Mignola, Frank Miller, Travis, and uh, Otomo. And then... I'm, <sighs> I seem to be pretty heavily influenced by Mark Silvestri, but um, I don't know where that would fall, but I think those are my top four. I'm sure, and then then there's like 5,000 others. <laughs> the list gets, it's like there's the tip of the iceberg, and then there's this just monumental other, other group. How I kind of how I base it is is how how kind of excited I get when I see their work, and then I I don't tend to get sick of my favorite stuff of theirs. So, oh, this is good. And did I don't know did Ruben? Oh, so Rubenstein did ink it, man. These ones kind of hurt hurt me a little bit just because of the fact that they probably sold this stuff in the 80s. At least probably Joe did. And man, it's like these are really valuable pieces. And that's always tough to see when you've got a comic book artist that, that you know, just... Maybe they got three or four hundred bucks for this back in the day, but this would sell for like you know two hundred thousand dollars now, or maybe even more. And in fact, I've I have a piece in here that a friend of mine is selling that right now is up to nine hundred thousand um, dollars. But he bought it, I think, for somewhere around four hundred and fifty to six hundred grand. Um, but uh, yeah, it's up for auction right now, and uh, it will go for a lot. And it's it's a simple piece. In terms of the complexity of the actual drawing, but the significance of it, that's where the money's at. <laughs> but yeah, he bought it, I want to say maybe 10 years ago for, I don't know, somewhere between, I think, 400 and 600 grand. I could be wrong, but that's that's kind of what I remember. 650 maybe, but uh, it's going to go for quite a bit more. It's not a bad investment. This is great, man. All right. Oh yeah, this is cool too. These are so cool. And again, it's it's a different line. I mean, you can definitely see Frank in it, but this is almost like Sergio Aragonis looking lines. And other stuff too, but I mean just it's it's like it really gets like loopy bloopy. Even the way that he he does this. He's so the dude is so experimental, man. It's incredible. This is great. And look at this. You know, the, the the fact that Frank has been so successful in his career, too, I think is a testament to being um, brave with your choices. Going out on a limb a bit, people seem to respect. Experimenting with your style, people seem to respect. As long as the quality is there, um, the fans seem to kind of go along with the ride. Now, they may have favorite eras of the stuff. This was great. So we'll zoom in on these because it's, a, it's, a, it's not a two-page spread. It, but it's two pages that were sold, I think, at the same time. But this top panel is just awesome. Man, it's so good. Capullo does some really great stuff like this, too. I'm I'm excited about Capullo's um, art book that he's getting together. I don't know if you follow him on Instagram, but Greg Capullo is 
getting together some sort of I'd probably be a crowdfunded book. He's gonna do great on it. Um but um uh, uh Capullo's awesome. And he's he's oh sorry, he's he's a great combination of um classic image, but then his roots are in the fundamentals and then he's just got monster chops on top of it i've i've said he finally started resharing some of those digital paintings now people know what i'm talking about but if you never saw those digital painted pieces that he did on deviantart i mean they weren't done for deviantart but we used to share them there they're incredible but greg is the he's the full package man the guy's so good and he likes metal which i like he plays his les pauls and drinks Black Death Coffee or whatever it's called. Viking <laughs> Zach Wild Coffee, whatever. <laughs> oh man. Oh, this is so good. God, look at that. And and you know, again, it's not a pure side view. He's got perspective. Don't fear perspective. It's your friend. It will make your work look better. The inks on this panel right here in particular are really, really good. I love the way that they did this right here. And then this line is just like them going like, we're so good, we're just gonna hit this with a nice fatty right there. And even this stuff, uh, so it's just, <laughs> that's mastery right there. This looks like really good paper. Um, I mean, it's yellowed, but I, I can just tell by how the, the how it actually looks and the lines going down on it. This is some good shit. I I is rare to get this kind of like paper that that um, doesn't bleed in the two thousands. You throw a line like this, and it would just be like it looked like wet toilet paper with all these like little like bleeding lines and stuff like that. But. Uh, I'm gonna give the Eon board uh, another chance. Not 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 like that. But what I'm saying is, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna try to work on some Eon board. I talked to the owner and um, he sent me some whiteout because the the one one issue that I had with the paper was it was it was an off white color. You can't tell when you look at it. But when I would use any kind of white paint, it would look like two different colors. It would be like let me just show you. So I don't mean to do a full sideboard, but it's worth. This is not a bad thing to talk about. But uh, yeah, like say the the paper might have had like this color. So you know, like it's a white like this, and and um, if it leans towards yellow, and your white paint leans towards a very light blue. Oops, sorry, let me do that. Let's use this brush. Um, they they really show up, and the thing was is his paper leans towards a blue, and so it makes white paint look yellow on it, and it really shows up, and it was kind of ugly, and I didn't like it on my originals, and in, in particular if I'm going to do a lot of splatter and stuff like that, I have to have the white ink, but he has white ink um, that he sells, so I'm hoping that it matches the actual color of his paper. This is a weird thing, because like Strathmore and those papers, Canson, um, I've never had that issue before, so it wasn't something that I had seen too much, but yeah. Again, kind of the long McFarlane panels. This is really interesting down here. Some crazy shit. Oh man, this is great. So, obviously, this is an expensive cover. Not as expensive as the one that's selling, but this went for, I think, close to a half a million. And it's it is really cool. I can zoom in, go full screen. Ah, oh, this is good too. Can't remember what how much this went for. That's nice. This was interesting. This was Frank Miller and God, who was the inker? Shoot, I can't remember. Darn it. It may have been Joseph Rubenstein. I'm not 100% sure. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool, man. I like it. They're kind of fun. This. So this is the piece. So yeah, this is uh, this is up to nine hundred thousand dollars right now. There's a. I believe that there's a layover for it, and it could be more lightning or something like that. But um, I mean. This is how the original looks. I'll zoom out so you can see. I mean, everyone's kind of familiar with this cover. But yeah, $900,000 for this right now. Isn't that crazy? It's a silhouette with lightning. 
But you know, it's a silhouette with lightning from a very important book. Art's a wild thing, that's for sure. It really is wild. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> Okay, we should be getting towards the end. Oh, this is nice. This, you can almost see some of his more old school influences. Is that, like, who does this remind you guys of? Is this, like, Cockrum? Someone from that kind of era? I'm not, like I said, that's a, like, the eight, the 80s stuff I, I don't know very well. In the 70s, I'm, I'm hitting this. This is a really nice page, though. But I'm always trying to learn, you know. That's why I ask. It's... Oh, man, that, that one is really cool. I almost can't tell what I'm looking at. Oh, his face is right here. I kept focusing on this, and I was like, is it like a mask with, like, eyes? His head's right here. Yeah, it was throwing me off. What is on his shoulder? I can't really tell what this is. What is that? I'll watch it back and be able to tell right away, but like right now, I'm like, <laughs> it's like when you see an optical illusion, it's like, do you see a witch or do you see a pretty lady? You're like, I can only see the witch. And then your eyes finally flip. <laughs> it reminds me of, was that the Seinfeld one where they had those posters that were the weird like pixels? And if you can relax your eyes, you can see the, pa the, the, the painting or whatever. Uh, those were pretty popular, like in the late 90s, early 2000s. This is great. Um, so it looks like he did a stat here. Yeah, so he statted this. Well, he did put it on the original board. So he must have he either had access to a copier or he had a copier at that point, which isn't that far-fetched for an artist. For his artist is as successful as him. And if he had a studio where he worked out of or whatever, you know, it would make sense to buy a copy machine if you're going to use it all the time to resize things and whatnot. So, I mean, nowadays that's our home printers, which I actually need to buy a new home printer. That's definitely on my short list of to do's. I don't mind. I mean, I have access to a good printer, but it's just so much more convenient to have one at home, too. This is really cool. Love this. Ah, so cool. And this very well could be his handwriting. I'm not positive on that, but I, there's a high likelihood that it might be. As I've seen his notes on pages, and it looks similar. Now, this may not be his handwriting, but um, and this is from Ronan. Well, I hope that this was a fun video for you all. Like I said, we should be kind of getting towards the end. Uh, how many more pages do we have? Oh, shit. Are you kidding me? No way. Is this... Hold on. Let me take a sip of coffee. <laughs> this is the very important decision I need to make here. I want you to yell at the screen, even though you're going to see this hours after I do it. Shall I continue? And just go through all the files? Or should I stop? I'll give you a second while I sip coffee to decide. You know what we're doing, right? We're going to continue. Alright, let's go, friend. No quit. <laughs> did you yell at the computer screen? I, probably, I bet a few people did. They might not have yelled. Oh, God, look at this. Man, this page is awesome. He's got coffee. Or no, it's... Just, He's making dirty coffee. <laughs> wow, this is so cool. That's me making the video. Although I've never smoked. Ah, <laughs> oh, this panel is great. Damn. <coughs> this page is so iconic. I, I mean... It's almost there's two there's two pages in Dark Knight Returns that always stick out to me. It's one is him in the race car or whatever in the beginning of the book, and then this. I don't know why, but like these are just ingrained in my head. And it's not like I'm not like a huge fan of this page. I don't dislike it, but I mean it's you know it is what it is. Um, but uh, yeah, it's funny. But this this is so memorable. Just this face and the pearls. But I mean obviously it's a very violent scene, but. Uh, Ha <laughs> ha. 
This is so awesome. <laughs> Go, Batman Grandma. I love this. This middle panel is so good. How funny. He looked like he had a lot of fun with this. Man, this is a great drawing right here. It's kind of Capullo-ish, like this. Or McFarlane, you know? Just, it's it's got a very good, like, animated quality to it. Oh, man, that's so great. Seven Leben sells this for two fifty. Oh, this is really cool. I'll zoom in, but uh, just to get a sense of it. Man, that is great. Oh my god, this video is a game changer. It's so good. There's his fancy signature. What is this? This is coolness is what it is. So I, based on this, this was, I think, the other piece I was thinking of. That other piece that I said was like a cover for like sort of a freedom of speech magazine or something like that. Um, that, that, that I think was right. And then this was the other page that kind of, this shot felt similar. And so I remembered that there was two pieces that were kind of similar. I just couldn't remember what they both look like. Oh, this is nice. This kind of reminds me of early Scott Williams pencils, and I said that right, but uh, Scott Williams did some sample pages for Marvel before he was an inker. Um, uh, I think it was a Daredevil script, in fact, um, and uh, he had a lot of Frank Miller in his stuff, and uh, kind of reminds me of the, the look that he had for it. They're, they're real good. He and Jim, coincidentally, had both done the same samples. I've talked about this, I think, in one other video or something like that. But uh, Scott, actually, at that point, was really kind of further along than Jim's. And most, most people that saw the pieces when he shared them kind of agreed that uh, Scott's work was a little further along. And that's him, him penciling. So kind of trippy, you know? This is pretty classic. But it just shows, you know, the thing, you know, you just, you have to stick to it and keep drawing pieces. You learn from mistakes and you learn from successes and just experience, you know, being challenged all the time to draw stuff that you're not comfortable with. It, it ends up being um, really helpful to progress your work. This is a cool piece. It's a little, oh, the car's upside down, I see. Oh, now it won't let me do it. That's funny. Now you're going to be that way, computer. That's interesting. Why? Why, computer? You did it before. Same piece. I just grabbed it twice. Oh, this is cool. I thought this was fun just because you could see like how far he fills the blacks to the borders. Because um, <clears throat> uh, with a tighter crop, you know, you would just assume that he fills the full page with it. But uh, really cool. I like the rims on the car. This is just great. What was the prelim and then this? Alrighty, what do we got here? It's interesting. Now, now I'm kind of curious if if um if all the Dark Knight returns aren't yellowed this much. Usually Heritage won't um, tweak. This was cool. I had never seen this before. So this is a cover that he did, Frank Miller, Klaus Janssen for Marvel Spider Woman. But it's funny. It's got all the Universal monsters in the background. I had never seen this. I'd grab it if I saw it in a back issue bin and it was affordable. It's kind of fun. Different. Marvel really had some great stuff, man. They they were a real fun company. This is really, really cool. It's pretty pretty um aggressive screen tone. Like the dots are quite big. And it looks zippity. Zippity. Zippity doo da, zippity. -a. Putting some zippy tone on my page today. I need to. I have like a bunch of art supplies out in my storage. I need to go through it because I have a big stack of screen tones, all kinds of different patterns and stuff like that. I, I've wanted to get it out for a while. I just don't know where it is. This is great. 
I can't even really say what my my favorite Frank Miller um, style is. They're all interesting, and I I don't really three hundred to me really isn't the same style. It's, there's similarities, but but uh, even the three hundred style I think is a evolution of this. It's, it's rare to see artists go through their career and actually work in so many different styles. <clears throat> At least American comic book artists. I'm trying to think of some. I don't know. Is there any? <laughs> There's got to be some. Travis's work changed, but it just kind of got better and better. Although he, he did change a lot, but uh, not not like styles like Frank. This was interesting. This was a short story for like some sort of a magazine or something. I wasn't really sure what it was. The, the other pages had a lot of text, so I just this was the only one I grabbed. But I I'd never seen this before. This is from 1974. Um, this was cool. So this is you're gonna see like three different scans of this. I love this um, Batman and Robin drawing with Alfred. It's really really cool. Then they I don't know if this was maybe they framed it, and then they have this. This could have been a stat panel. Um, and so, uh, this is how the person framed it, but then they also have a sketch or this, I don't, this may be a photocopy of the pencils. Yeah. It looks like it. So maybe Frank sent them, uh, or was included with the auction, but it's a photocopy of the page, um, before it was inked. And then this is just the scan itself of the piece. It's cool. But yeah, this Batman doesn't look like that other Batman to me. The the one that I was talking about that that I I just don't notice the the silhouette doesn't seem to be the same Batman. So it throws me off. So it's cool. There was about three pages with a um, Black Widow that were a lot of her like leaping and doing stuff. Now they may have pulled this image out and used it as like a credits piece. But um, I've got a few fight pages of Black Widow that are pretty cool. Of course, Elektra here. His lighting on faces like this is so good. That's really cool. Like, this is nice, too. Man, this one. Okay, I think we saw this page. There was a couple that sometimes if they go to auction more than once, um, uh, I'll accidentally grab the scan twice. I, no, I don't think we had seen this one. I think when I grabbed it, I thought I had seen it before. Um, and it could have been one of the color stat pieces. This is kind of cool. Bullseye and Daredevil. For people that read this book, it's probably a fun memory. This was cool. Another Hulk piece. Had to grab some Hulk. And it's got a skeleton-like character on it. This was interesting to me because this this is early in Frank's career and does have some similarities to Ronin and Sin City a little bit. And um, this is way before any of that stuff happened. Um, at least as far as I can tell. I'm not sure the date on this. But... Um, yeah, like the rendering and stuff down here. It's not something that I saw a lot in his work at this time. If it's if it's around the year that I'm thinking it is, but uh, and then this stuff looks like Sin City. So these ideas were in his head somewhere, percolating. It's another leaping Black Widow. <clears throat> and oh, this is cool. Well, I know what I'm doing today. Watching this video back twice. <laughs> now I've got stuff to do. I may throw it on in the background. I've got to scan art. I'm selling a bunch of stuff to make money for Blaster Kid so that I can work on it and not have to stress an income. This was cool. Uh, it, it's it's I I honestly can't remember what this is. Oh, this is Sin City. I was thinking it was Sin City, but it like it has the three hundred vibe. But um, I sort of remember this was one of the later I think later stories or just a pinup or something. She's crazy looking. I'd hang out with her. Give her a wig. All right. Uh, this is obviously Sinkevich and Frank. I I'm I'm assuming Frank did the pencils and then Bill Ink uh, or painted it. It's pretty wild. I, Frank must have been tripping, because it's like you know how good Sinkevich is, but um, yeah, if, like you give him a pencil drawing, you get this as the art. You'd be like, whoa, man, it's so cool. Oh, this is a great page. 
so you got your Frank Miller original art movie, The Saturday Matinee. <laughs> this is nice. I, it's really interesting that Marvel would cut the pages. Like I said, I know it's somehow to fit it into a machine that I think that they photograph it on, but I, I would think that you would want accurate cuts. Like these look, these make more sense. This makes no sense to me at all. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> the machine can't like go like we need a wobbly line that just cuts across the top this is pretty cool but I don't really know how that stuff works I'm just kind of half kidding but uh... that would be weird to get your pages back and they're all cut at the top I'd be like oh but I guess at that point it was just the way it was this is cool. I kind of like that you can... Oh, it's the bar stool. I was thinking it was like um, a slit in her skirt and you were seeing a little bit of her thigh or her butt. This is really nice, though. Man, it's great looking. Get some cool texture on their clothes. This is interesting, too. These guys creeping up. <clears throat> That's a cool panel. and This is good, too. This is an interesting shot. It's a little hard for me to read. I guess this is his legs and his feet, but it feels short. Like there, it feels like there needs to be more space. This is, you'll see the original page in a second. But this is just the color version of it, but it was kind of fun, the contrast of it. The storytelling in, in this panel reminded me a little bit of um, some stuff that I did with John Romita Jr. when I saw him. Uh, John would do some panels like this. They're probably harken back to Frank Miller. Um, but uh, here's the page. But yeah, we did. Um, I did a little bit of... I guess it was Dark Knight. Was it? Huh. I, I don't... You know what? I never even realized that. I think it may, it might have been Dark Knight with Frank Miller writing it. I don't... I don't that's weird. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I, I I was asked to help out on a John Romita Jr. Dark Knight book. Yeah, it might have been Frank Miller writing it. I didn't even realize that. Hmm. Now I'm gonna have to check. I honestly, am, I don't know who wrote this story. <clears throat> I didn't read it because I just did a few pages. It's no big deal, but it was fun. You know. This is nice. He looks a little like Frazetta. Okay. Oh, this is nice. This is up for auction, I think, right now. I could be wrong on that, but I, I kind of want to say that I think this was like a current auction. So if you've got some loose change, grab yourself some Frank Miller. More Hulk. This is the last Hulk one, though. Rah! Pants still hanging on for dear life. <laughs> So this will be Rubenstein, <clears throat> Frank Miller from the Wolverine miniseries. It's very cool, very collectible. Yeah, this is awesome. Nice inks here too. Really like nice inks on the hair and stuff like that. I like this, the thin lines and then a few little thickers. The hair looks cool. This is from Ronan. And some pencils from Daredevil. Very cool. Page 15 layout. Man, that's nice. That's really interesting. I like how he drew the arm. And this this is great. He really had good anatomy. Man, that's nice. You can see the, the bone right there. Do you see that? Man, that's cool. And even he's even got the twist of the muscles. Wow, that's impressive. Dude's been doing his homework for sure. Oh, this is great. Man, he's legit. Oh, look at this. The page. All that anatomy got totally like hid. I mean, it's it's there. It looks fine how it is, but it's funny. But you don't really see the twist of the... Um, the tricep uh, wrapping onto the the bone. Man, that's so cool. Yeah, it's 
that's really cool. Okay. Same thing, I just saved the other file of it. This is kind of cute. Zoom. Oh, bastard's brew. Look at that. Whoa. So I don't know, was this like a beer label? <clears throat> or is this uh, something just that was like in the, the book? I can't remember. I'd drink, I would drink a bastard's brew. I'd try it. This was funny. So I had to sign in like three times to see this. It needed adult verification. And I was like, really? For this? <laughs> I don't know. The end. That'd be funny if this was the last scan. The Cadillac handles like a dream. I knew she would. Uh, this is from that space book with the um, other inker. I can't remember his name. But uh, that's kind of cool. This was the other um, Bill Sienkiewicz, uh, Frank Miller, uh, Lone Wolf and Cub cover. Nineteen eighty-eight. Man, that was a long time ago. All right, let me see how many more pages we have now. I'm like, okay, just a few. Good. <laughs> My voice is getting tired. All right, blue pencil. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Frank does use blue pencil um, for his underdrawings. I don't know how long he did it for, but uh, I definitely noticed it in. Um, the art of Sin City, but here it doesn't look like it is. So I, I get the impression that he does light box a lot of stuff. So um, uh, odds mm. are, well, and I do see a little bit of blue pencil in the hand. He may tighten it up or whatever. Blue pencil doesn't always erase very well. So yeah, there's a little bit of blue here. This is really cool. The way that he lit this guy's figure is really wild. Granted, this book wasn't colored, but if, if it was going to be colored, you'd really be leaving a lot of drawing uh, choices to your colorist, so you would need to definitely have someone that can draw, which isn't a lot of... I mean, it's definitely not all colorists, for sure. A lot of them just have um, sort of the toolbox of techniques that get a, nor a normal comic book page done more than um, do finishes. You can tell by how they use light sources, how well they know how to draw. Once I started to learn more about drawing and could see what the pencil was indicating with the way that they were lighting stuff, you could tell real quick when a colorist was just like kind of, I wouldn't call it paint by numbers, but would lean a little more like this. So these are Steve Olaf um, color guides for... Um, the Wolverine story. I'm assuming this is Rubenstein and Frank. I don't recognize this page, to be honest, though. I don't, I don't remember this at all. But it looked kind of cool. I'm a big Olaf fan, so this is cool, too. Yeah, I guess it is. You know what it is? Is The book just didn't print this, this vibrant, and so it feels very different because the colors are so hot. 1982. This is cool. Oh, this is nice. Tried to grab a variety. I figured if someone was a Frank Miller fan and they were going to stick it out for like a 90 minute video that I wanted to make sure that I hit most of the iconic titles, um, you know, with, with at least a little bit of that stuff. I, you know, you do the best that you can with uh, being able to search around and find stuff. So we should be like right at the end. There's probably like one, I mean, two or three left. This is cool. Simple, but nice. And he's using the, I've never inked anything on the Dark Horse paper. Wonder how it is. I've always liked, I've always liked Dark Horse comics. I was, I, I felt like they're a good company. I didn't, I, it was, I've I've mentioned before that before creator own books became kind of like a, a thing that was more of a possibility, I'd always sort of looked at like image might have been ultimately where I, I would try to fit in just because you could self-publish through there, although that they distribute it. But uh, 
Yeah, I would consider Dark Horse, but I'm like, I don't think that they do do that that way. Okay, so we're at the end. But uh, but yeah, I've always liked Dark Horse, but yeah, just never... The only fantasy that I ever had of working for Dark Horse would be that if I got lucky enough to do some sort of um, offshoot of Hellboy, you know, like Abe Sapien miniseries or, you know, just something odd like that. Um, but anyway, all right. Well, that was really, really fun. It ended up being about an hour and a half long. So nice long Saturday video for all of you. I'm not going to do super fun Sunday tomorrow, obviously, but you can watch this anytime you want. If you're at the end of this, you already know because you've watched it. But uh, yeah, have a great day. I'll be back probably Monday or Tuesday and um, we'll start a new influence chain. If Kelsey is free, I'll have him join us on this one. And if not, he'll definitely join us on a, a future one because he's excited to come back and I'm excited to have him back. So it'll be awesome. And we're going to lot of fun and if you're not following his channel kelsey's that is uh make sure you do because he said he was going to stream every day live um until he finishes uh, nora saga so that's very exciting and um all right i'll talk to you guys uh, very soon bye have a great weekend